the power of people and the power of protest have driven this movement for racial justice. At the forefront, of course, Black Lives Matter. And I'm joined now by its co-founder, Opal Tometi. Opal Tometi, welcome to the program. As we're asking everybody today, what was your immediate sense when you heard that verdict handed down? Well, thanks for having me. You know, my immediate feeling when I heard the verdict was one of relief. I didn't expect to feel so emotional. To be quite honest, I had actually tuned out to a certain degree because of the emotional kind of toll all of these, you know, cases and, and, and acts of violence and the shootings that we've been hearing about in addition to watching the, the trial. Um, and so I kind of, I allowed myself to take a step back and to not be tied to the TV every single day. And so by the time I finally went to listen to the, the verdict, I was completely overwhelmed. I was moved to tears. I couldn't help but think about George Floyd, his loved ones, his gorgeous daughter, his family, and the millions of people around the world who Bridget. demanded that we see that his murderer be brought to some sort of quote unquote justice or, or accountability in this case. And so I was, I was relieved. Uh, to be quite honest, simply put. I'm going to ask you about your quote-unquote justice because I think that's exactly what people are asking about in terms of what it means for the future. But first I want to ask you, how do you feel personally? You're one of three co-founders of Black Lives Matter movement. You know, people stayed on the streets. You know, protest and activism happened all this year. Mostly black people, but many, many millions of white people joining as well. And as you said, around the world. How do you feel about your, I, I would say, transformative impact on what we've seen transpire in the courtroom? You know, this is a real testament to the power of the people, the power of people who are moved so deeply from a sense of their own you know, righteousness and connection to humanity and move from their own you know, moral conviction to say, hey, we're going to the streets in the middle of a pandemic. We can't sit idly by while our neighbors are being you know, gunned down and, 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 or left to be choked to death in, in broad daylight. I think people were ultimately fed up. And so last year we saw historic uprisings. And you know, I think the New York Times said it was the largest movement in in history around the world and it's incredibly you know from the perspective where i sit it's it's humbling to see but honestly it's really about everyday people taking ownership of their lives taking ownership of their destiny and becoming the type of you know citizenry that is that we deserve so that we can transform our society and have a world where black people are finally treated with the dignity and respect that we deserve. And so to me, this is really a testament of, of, of the people, everyday people taking to the streets and saying, you know what, enough is enough. We've known for far too long that this kind of, of, of violence and, and killing of, of unarmed black people continues to plague this country and we're tired of it. And despite there being you know, the COVID-19 pandemic, we know that we can't let this go on and we have to let go of the apathy. We have to do something. We have to sacrifice a bit and we're going to have to take things, you know, matters into our own hands and be in the streets. So I'm moved by every single person who took their feet to the street, um, who joined in with their neighbors, their loved ones. They brought their kids. You know, people of all ages were out last year. And so this is really a big kudos to everybody who, who was moved and who got into the streets. And but I will also say that it's, it's sad that it would take that type of global uprising to see this type of, of verdict come And up, also, right? we know that this is systemic. Well, yes, and oh, I yes. wanted to ask you about, you know, the, the, the future, because look, many are saying, okay, we want to celebrate, but we can't really celebrate. What is going to happen in the future? Even George Floyd's brother says, I think today has been an occasion where people can celebrate, but tomorrow it's back to business. For all African-Americans, for all black people in the United States and around the world, 
What do you, where does this conviction stand? Do you think it's transformative? What, or do you have to keep people on the street and keep up this struggle? To be quite honest, this verdict is not transformative. This is one incident where we see that there is accountability for a murder that was caught on camera in broad daylight in which millions of people around the world witnessed um, by virtue of seeing the video footage and, and said, you know, enough is enough, something has to be done about this. However, I think this one verdict cannot be seen as what is going to now become the status quo unless we see the laws change, unless we see the types of investments in our communities and the, you know, the, the reallocation of policing dollars towards other s solutions that keep everyday people safe. And that's ultimately what I believe that we need. If we're going to have com uh, conversations about public safety, they have to look at solutions that really reflect the best of us and that uh, respect uh, black life. And that ultimately looks at, you know, where are our dollars going? What are we doing with those resources? What can we do instead? What kinds of decisions that can we make that um, looks at people with dignity as opposed to being a problem or seeing us as a criminal, you know, right off the bat, just because of the color of our skin. Yeah, and we will be following this and so will the world. Opal Tomedi, thank you so much. Great to have you on today.